she's got game. She is very talented. She's very smart, and she'll be a force to be reckoned with. Welcome back to Newsmax Now. That's Senator Lindsey Graham yesterday praising 2020 candidate Senator Kamala Harris and her debate performance against former Vice President Joe Biden. And Graham is not alone in his thinking. Not only did Harris raise $2 million in just 24 hours after her first debate, according to a new Morning Console poll, 12% of Democratic primary voters said Harris was now their first choice for president, doubling the senator's vote from just a week before the first round of debates. Joe Biden actually lost five points, but he's still leading the field at 33%. Bernie Sanders remained at the same at 19%, but lost favorability points. Elizabeth Warren is now tied in third place with Kamala Harris and Pete Buttigieg lost a point and now sits at just 6%. But this still, this is where you want to be. Joining us now to break all this down is political commentator and co-author of Let Me Finish, Ellis Hennigan, also Trump 2020 advisory board member and the president of the American Winning Coalition, Steve Rogers. Steve Ellis, great to see you both. Thanks for coming on. Many say that that was the moment. The moment when Harris actually put herself over the top was when she attacked Joe Biden on that issue of busing. But Biden supporters say it was a low blow. Let's take a listen to review. There was a little girl in California who was part of the second class to integrate her public schools. And she was bused to school every day. And that little girl was me. <laughs> that look on Joe Biden's face says, I, I wasn't prepared for this. Uh, I thought we were going to be nice to each other, Senator Harris. Well, that Harris busing attack on Biden seems to have landed. But the question is, how long lasting will that hit be, Ellis? Go ahead and Whoa. Steve jump in when we feel like Whoa. Ellis has kind of <laughs> lost his way. You know, of course it was a low blow, but that's politics. It's a context sport. Of course it's a low blow. Listen, there, there's something like two dozen candidates out there. You got to get noticed. People are going to go up and down. There's no reason for panic. We're five months away from the first vote. You know what? This is why we have a primary system. Well, and what this absolutely, without any doubt, proved to America was that not only herself, but all of them had no vision for America. They had they ran out of gas with regard to criticizing the president of the United States because of his tremendous success. They have no vision for America. So she defaulted to, ah, let me attack Joe Biden and at least I'll please the base somewhat. This is not going to last very long. Now, I'm sure there was plenty of room for criticism on Biden's response or lack thereof. He just didn't seem like he had it together. But, you know, also, I wondered how much went into the planning of this attack, because Harris is already selling T-shirts with a picture of herself as a little girl on the front. The unisex tee that's available on her merch shop says, that little girl was me. It's just $30 if you want to support her campaign. So, Ellis, I was wondering, do you think these T-shirts were planned before the actual debate? John, were you born yesterday? <laughs> Of course they <laughs> Maybe, were. Yeah. Come on. I mean, this is what you do. I know. This is, I'm, I know. I'm asking John, that question, that, you know, kind is, of this obviously. Is, but don't you think, Ellis, don't you think, I mean, aren't these things just a little too thought out? It's too calculated. Sure, well, sure, sure. Politics. It's, 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 it's wow. politics. It's calculated. Look, it started off as the greatest show on earth, better than Barnum and Bailey Circus. So why not put the, uh, the, the products out there to sell to raise money? Again, I go back to the one primary point that it seems to be escaping everyone is what in the world does any of those Democrats up there who, by the way, well, in my view, are, have become socialists. Let me, let me help uh, Steve What in the this. world do they have to offer America? Help yeah, me. Well, help let me, me help Steve with this. I, me. I, I understand that, that he doesn't agree with a vision that says that working people deserve a better shake, that we ought to have a, a, a more integrated role in the world, that we ought to be concerned about the future of the climate, that, uh, that the border thing needs to be solved in an intelligent way that's not just slogan. It's an interesting interpretation of what you heard, Alice. That's a different vision than Steve has. But to suggest that these people don't have a vision is simply wrong. I mean, I, you know, we I can tell. And I may have heard, I don't, I'm going to disagree with Steve and you both a little bit. Because the vision that I heard was raising taxes on the middle class. That yes. was Julian. Car I mean, that was Bernie Sanders. I also heard about giving illegal immigrants health, health insurance. Don't that was that, that was everybody. Education. Yeah. Education. Don't so, forget yeah, okay, that. Those, that's what I heard. Yeah, I heard a vision job. for America, yeah. Steve, but it's not Tax the vision. The not your grandfather's vision. All right, let's talk about Julian Castro, who was also I think he did pretty well for himself at the debates. The former HUD secretary. He was making the rounds yesterday, talking about his various immigration proposals. Speaking of border plans, Ellis, which include providing illegal immigrants with health care, decriminalizing illegal border crossings, and a possible path to citizenship. Good. George Stephanopoulos asked Castro if he's in favor of having a, quote, open border. Here's his answer. 
I know you reject the rhetoric about open borders, but isn't that effectively open borders, not limiting how we're, our immigration in any real way? Uh, right, uh, open borders is just a right-wing talking point. It always has been. I have a completely different vision, a better, stronger vision of how we can be more effective, more humane, and smarter on border security and immigration. Uh, that might be true. That this, might be true, oh, but here's the issue. To me, decriminalizing illegal border crossings does sound like open borders. Listen, well, here's, open what borders. And, here's what we need. Here's what we need. No, no, Steve, come on. Come, come on. Come on. on. We, you're, need you're, a, we need a rational... Give a sec, Steve. Give a sec. We need a rational border system. The problem is, is that the folks on Steve's side are so hostile to immigrants, they can't agree to any kind of reasonable path to citizenship. They can't give a cut of break to these DACA kids. All they want to talk about is the most hostile, brutal, separate the families, oh, abuse please. the people. Until we come up with a reasonable plan here, it's not going to get solved. And the president said he could solve it. He's made it 10 times worse. Well, you got to admit that. Well, here's the reasonable plan. It's called obey the law. We have laws that need to be obeyed. You need borders in order to have a country. Now, under the socialist agenda, which the Democrats are offering, uh, yes, they're going to offer free college, free this, free that. Oh, the government is going to take complete control of your life. It seems like my colleague here is uh, really happy that he's going to pay for all of that. At the end of the day, President Trump is doing a fine job. In fact, he got Mexico to get 12 to oh, 15,000 troops pay to the, the uh, border, to their southern border, <laughs> uh, to stop illegal immigration. Alice, but he's got things on the hey, control. How's, how's that wall payment coming, man? How's that working out? <laughs> Ellis, do you really think that, that it, that's, an econ that's an election message that's going to win in these, in these swing districts, giving illegal immigrants health care before we fix the VA here's what, system? Here's what I think. First of all, health care is a much more difficult and complicated issue than simply immigrants. Most Americans believe, as I do, John, I bet you even you believe it, that decent Americans I know it is. It's deserve, very complicated, and that's why I think we should fix it deserve, for American citizens first deserve, before we start well, giving you know what? it away. Why, let's do this. I'm going to build a coalition right here. Why don't the three of us agree that universal health care ought to be available to all Americans? Americans, all Americans, and then we can deal fee? with the illegal question. Absolutely that. not, and I'll tell you Typical. why. Healthcare is available to all Americans. It's called go to work, get a job, do what I've done, do what my parents and grandparents have done. You pay for it. You work, you pay, and you get. All this free stuff means that the government will control you and, by the way, enslave you economically where you're not going to be able to breed without government intervention. Judge Let's Steve, Steve, just obey the laws. Steve may not realize that tens of millions, and I, and I don't think we should joke about this, tens of millions of hardworking Americans go to work every single day of the week, work their fingers to the bone, and because of our health care system, they still can't afford to be able to provide health care to their children. Look, I you know think what? we can That's all agree, Ellis, that health care needs to be more affordable. And Thank you. So Thank far, you. neither party has figured out a way Thank to make you. it more affordable. But I think we can also agree that there are tens of millions of people, or at least close to 18, I think, is the number of people that have private health insurance that don't want the government version of health insurance. What about those people? And to those your, people that Steve talked yeah, about yeah, to that who have point, worked for their health insurance, right? To, to that they point, don't want the government version of health insurance. To that point, I could tell you that uh, uh, dozens and dozens of people used to come into my office and tell me after Obamacare was passed, uh, that they lost their health care, that it was the prices were increased so astronomical they lost it. So you know what? Obamacare, Hillary care, government care is not the answer. Well, the answer is well, at least Congress guys, you got to run a commercial job. break. But you know, Joe Biden seems to be the one person, probably because he has to, that's willing to defend Obamacare. We'll see if more of these candidates are willing to do that. LSD, stay where you guys are. We got more coming up here. When we come back, six stories to take you behind the news.